This is a microsurgical decompression of a tumor of a rare posterior third ventricular pathology, describing the interhemispheric approach for the spinal region. So this is a 33-year-old armed forces. He was an Air Force gentleman, presented intermittent headaches and some memory problems. Specifically, he had no paranoid syndrome, no visual complaints, and his uh, systems are negative. And uh, there was not anything contributory from his medical and social history, and his neurological examination was completely intact. On imaging, however, if you look at his uh, MR with GAD on the right and T2, you can see this lesion in the third ventricular area going up into the third ventricle. It's not that large a tumor, but it was fairly deep. This is just the patient positioning. We put him in a lateral position with the uh, head down, so the external lobe will fall downwards. Uh, we always place a lumbar drain, and I think if you're going to do this approach, the stereotactic system is essential. I, I think it's almost dangerous doing it without that. I'll go with a dural opening, arachnoid dissection, decompression, and closure. This shows the lateral position. Again, you can see it's beautiful. The gravity really helps you bring down the right occipital hemisphere. And if you have a lumbar drain, it just falls. There's really no retraction. And sometimes you can put a retractor on the falks as well to get a better uh, approach. This is just the bone flap. We take out three or four centimeters to expose the uh, transverse sinus, and just the uh, sigmoid sinus, and we go across the midline so you can have a better approach. This is uh, the intraoperative video. It shows how we do it. Again, here you can see we are looking at the video now. And you can see this very gentle retraction. You can see the faults there. Uh, and the arachnoid here, you know, no matter whether you come supracerebellar or, or uh, interhemispheric, the arachnoid tends to be very, um, tends to be quite uh, dense and thick here. So here it is, we've opened the arachnoid. You can look in fairly well. Uh, you can, at three o'clock, you can see the corpus callosum, the posterior part. And uh, we're going now deeper in there. Again, this arachnoid needs to be opened a little bit more. And we're gonna divide that. And again, very careful dissection. You notice there's a retractor on the falks as well. So it opens the corridor a little bit better. Uh, again, we use the frame of stereotactic system all through it so that our trajectory goes straight down. Uh, and we're going pretty deep here. This is a deeper lesion. Uh, and we're coming in deeper into the area and we'll switch into a higher power. Um, sometimes you'll see the tumor right here. In this case, you can see we're we felt we need a slightly bigger approach here. We're taking some of the vessels off. This is the posterior part of the corpus callosum. Again, smaller lesions that are deeper, it's technically a little bit more difficult. And here we are going just underneath the um, corpus callosum there. You know, in these cases, we know the, inter these, the veins are superior to the tumor, and that's why you have to be cautious. Uh, and now you can see we went above the uh, above on that side, just below the uh, corpus callosum, trying to make that aperture a little bit bigger, taking some of those bridging veins off. And we keep using the stealth. I think that's very important to be able to use the stealth. And you can see now we get a little glimpse of the tumor right there, deep in there. So at this stage, we have our first look at the tumor. You can see it's a uh, reddish vascular lesion and uh, we're quite deep there and now you can actually see the tumor itself again we're bipolaring the surface multiple biopsies are taken from here uh, you know I don't I'll get a frozen but it won't really I think when you're there and if you can remove the whole thing I prefer doing that so here we're taking a bigger piece of uh, tissue out. We 
Again, nice big piece for permanent and frozen. Again, now we're trying to uh, go around the capsule. This is a superior extent. We're defining the superior extent. And here you can see there's a nice plane there to so stay in that arachnoid plane and taking it off the superior pole. Real gentle traction, counter traction there. Now we're going inferiorly. Again, freeing it up. Here you can see that nice plane. Going on the right side of the tumor. One of the disadvantages of Roche is you're going from the right, you're not going to see the left side that well. I'll sometimes use a mirror to look in on that side. You could even use an endoscope if that's what you feel comfortable with. And now we're stuck with sort of the medial aspect on the left side. Here you can see a nice plane there looking into the third. So now the only portion that I'm worried about is on the left side. Here, nice plane again. Now we're going to the superior part there again. And the goal really has been, since this is a smaller tumor, is just to keep shrinking it and to work around it. Again, nice planes there. So what we're concerned now is the uh, part of the tumor on the left side. Most of the other part has been mobilized. A little bit of bleeding there, trying to get some hemostasis there as well. These are the non-stick bipolars. I kind of like these ones, yeah. Um, coming to the opposite side. You can see it looks pretty clean now, completely dissected off the other side. Looks pretty clean and good hemostasis. You can see the fox has been bipolar there on the edge. No retraction, brain looks very relaxed. And I think one of the big advantages of these approaches is they don't have that much neck pain and it's a little less traumatic in terms of that. So our closure is fairly routine, watertight closure with four neuron, and then we uh, put the craniotomy with plates, galia. This is a post-op MRI that shows a complete resection of the mass. And this was a pineal tumor with uh, hyalized glomerular blood vessels and some spoke wheels that we saw. And again, the pancreatin and vimentin is, was, and was negative for neurofilament. So the final diagnosis of papillary tumor pineal region this is really a relatively new description of this tumor. And, uh, you know, he was discharged. We did give him radiation treatment as well. And he's done very well postoperatively back in the uh, Air Force, uh, no deficits and back at work. Thank you very much.